let us now talk about the next type of respiration that is pulmonary respiration. Pulmonary respiration term is given when the structure are lungs. The structures which help in this uh, exchange of gases, they are lungs. And this is seen in all higher vertebrates. That is amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals. So example would be amphibians. Reptiles, birds, and mammals. Now, why uh, the structure is this instead of the outer surface area? If we talk about human beings, so now we will start taking this pulmonary respiration with reference to human beings and we will give it a heading that is respiration in humans but we are discussing the same pulmonary respiration so now how come these lungs are more effective structures as compared to skin like structure in uh, lower animals like in earthworm we saw that the outer area outer surface that the skin acts as the respiratory surface why in higher organisms skin is not the main respiratory uh, structure if we have to take in humans, the skin, number one, the reason why skin is not the very effective uh, respiratory structure and why it has been shifted to a specialized respiratory organ. Skin is thick. We know our skin is made up of two layers, the epidermis and dermis. Epidermis also has many layers. And the upper layers or upper cells, they are slightly keratinized also. So it is thick. Second, and the reason why it is thick, the, it is thick to prevent water loss by evaporation. Because these organisms, after amphibians, they have become uh, terrestrial. So, to adapt to terrestrial life, we have to prevent that water loss by evaporation. And to do that, the skin has become uh, impermeable to water and it is thick. And that is why skin is not a good structure or an option. Now, the structure are lungs. Do lungs fulfill all those uh, characteristic features which we said must be shown by a respiratory surface? So, if we have to compare the lungs with skin, lungs, they have the alveoli. Alveoli is the area or the place where exchange of gases takes place. And alveoli are very thin. They are lined by only simple squamous epithelium. Lined by simple squamous epithelium that means the cells there are in one layer and that is the thinnest uh, epithelium and so exchange of gases can take place so one criteria was that the surface area should be thin second alveolar surface is moist so it is also moist next criteria we said should be highly vascular so in each alveolus there is blood supply and when we draw alveolus if we say this is an alveolus so it is lined by simple squamous epithelium and there would be blood supply so each alveolus is supplied with blood so we can say it is highly vascular The next criteria was the pigment and we know we have hemoglobin and which is in RBC. So respiratory pigment hemoglobin is also present. Next property which must be seen or which must be shown by any structure or organ which can be considered as a respiratory surface 
is the surface area. If we compare the surface area of skin, it is about 1.5 to 2 square meters. This is the total skin surface area. That means if we take out our complete skin and lay it in the form of a sheet, the surface area is going to be 1.5 to 2 square meters. And if we do the same thing with alveoli, that means we take out, take out all alveoli and lay them in the form of a sheet, the surface area would come to about 50 to 75 say square meters. Here it is a uh, 2 square meter if we take the upper end and here it is about 75 square meter. Just to have an idea, this is almost equal to one half of the tennis court and 1.5 to 2 meters is a small piece. So surface area wise also alveoli are very effective and that is why Lungs are the best respiratory structures or options over skin as the structure. So here we have a comparison also. When we talk about the respiratory system in humans, we classify it into three categories. Number one, we would be talking about respiratory tract. That means all those tubes and passages. In this, we would have or we would discuss external nares, then we will take up nasal passage or rather say nasal, nasal chambers. Its inner opening that is internal nares, internal nares. And then it would come into nasopharynx. Then would be nasopharynx. Then would come larynx. That is voice box. And then trachea bronchi. Trachea bronchi bronchioles and alveoli. So this would make the complete tract. That means the tubes passage through which the air is going to come in. And the next, this is respiratory tract. Second would be the main structure that is lungs. And from here, it actually becomes a part inside the lungs. So we'll talk about the lungs also. And the next structure which helps is a muscular membrane or structure that is diaphragm. So this would be our structural part. Once we understand the structure, then we would take up the processes like breathing mechanism, transport of gases, exchange of gases and so on. So now next segment onwards, we'll actually start with the respiratory